And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Dinner in Paris. Dinner in Paris, a nicely named game about the nice little cafes you can go to downtown Paris and see the beautiful scenery and eat out at a nice restaurant. And that's what this goal is, except you're not the person going out to eat at the nice restaurant. You're one of these nice restaurants who's not quite so nice because you want people to come to your restaurant and not others. So you're going to build your terrace in an unusual way. It's a little weirdly th thematic in that way. You're building it out to cut off other people's terraces and get folks to come to your restaurant. Here's how it plays. To understand the game, we're going to look at a player board here, and on this board you'll see I have all these rows are filled with terraces. Players have an income here, which they'll start at one, but there are different kinds of restaurants that you'll be able to build over the course of the game. Each of these restaurants has a different size, so let's say for example I want to build a pizzeria. There's a certain number of ingredients that you're going to need to build that. Once you build a pizzeria, you're going to take that pizzeria you're going to put on the board. You're going to find the matching top of yours to put in it. So you put it in the roof like this to show that it's yours. It's going to increase your income. So this would increase my income to two. And it's going to be worth a certain number of victory points at the end of the game. Players are going to be using their income to build terraces. Each terrace is going to have a different cost. For example, if you build a terrace for the smallest building, then they only cost one coin until you get up to here, then they cost two coins and three coins. And this is like a virtual income of sorts. You have another cube to use to keep track of it. So if my income was up to five and I could build two of the cost twos, and maybe something else. Uh, each of them is going to get progressively more expensive. You see the build the last one down here costs 12 coins. But as you build them, you're going to be increasing your victory points that you're going to get at the end of the game. And at certain limits, your permanent income is going to go up. On a player's turn, they're going to always draw a card, one of the face up or off the top of the deck. Cards are going to be one of the foods that you need to open a restaurant, one of the ingredients, sometimes a coin card that you'll be able to use to give you extra money on a turn. This is a wild ingredient, one of three different types. And then you have two actions you can take, and there are four possible actions that you can take. You can draw another resource card if you want to on your turn as one of your actions. You can open a restaurant. You spend the ingredients, and you're going to put the restaurant on the outside edge of the board, depending on the player. So in this board, for example, if I was playing a three-player game, there's a small black dotted line. That's where they would go. And so you're going to place your restaurant and open it there. And then finally, you can build terraces. or Not finally, but this is one of the main parts of the game. When you build these terraces, you're going to be taking them off your board and sticking them in front of your building. Now, you can build the terraces any way you want. The only rule is that no terrace can touch another one. So if I have a restaurant right here, um, I'm going to be kind of messed over if the red had built like that. But maybe I can quickly get mine out there and start building my terraces. So there's a bit of an area control here. Players are building their terraces for a couple reasons. As you pull them off your board, you're going to be scoring victory points. But you're also trying to accomplish some goals. So, for example, having nine terraces in the Rue Quest area over here, I, this is going to get me three points. If I make this specific shape, this is going to get me five points. And players will have some personal ones, and there will also be some on the side of the board that players are attempting to do. Also, every time your terrace covers up a pigeon, you will draw a pigeon card. Drawing a pigeon card will give you sometimes an immediate ability, like this one, draw two resource cards, or you keep it till you play ability, two coins, or I can open an ingredient using one less, a restaurant using one less ingredient. So there's various things that you're trying to do. Also, at the beginning of each game, you're going to be drawing one of these cards, placing it here, and at the end of the game, there's extra victory points going to be done. Most terraces around flower beds, most terraces around street lights, most terraces in the Rue Quest area. And these are going to change from game to game 
And so that's going to be added to your score at the end. The game will end when players put out a certain number of restaurants on the board, depending on players. If someone puts all their terraces out from two of the categories, or if for some reason you can't place any more restaurants or terraces on the board, because it's going to fill up as time goes by. At that point, the end game is triggered. You're going to score points for all the restaurants that you've built for how far each of your terraces rows has been played. For the majorities over here, from the victory points, cards that you've gotten over the course of the game, and whoever has the most victory points is the winner. Component-wise, I have, I, I mean, on one hand, I really like the restaurants. You can see here, this is one that's taken apart, but you'll get these roofs at the beginning when you first get the game, and you just put them on. They're almost like a Lego block. They stay on pretty well, so that's kind of cool. And I really like that when it's done, you can put the restaurant name in the top. It shows your color. It's really easy to see the different colors on the board itself. Uh, these are recessed, so putting the terraces in nice, the symbology works pretty well. The card quality is okay. I'm not a big fan of the card quality. It's pretty thin. The corners are too rounded, and the cards themselves feel a little cheap. The tile quality is fine, and the board itself is nice looking. Uh, like I said, it's the, you have a four player set up here, and then the, the row inside for three, and then if you're going to play with two players, you simply use the other side of the board for a smaller setup. But I think it's very pretty, and other than the cards, I'm happy with the quality. So there you have it. Dinner in Paris is a very simple game in many regards. It has that same kind of flow that a lot of games do collect resources, use those resources to build stuff. Where this game is different in is the terraces that you build out is, it's really a little cutthroat. You gotta go into this game knowing that because if I build some small terraces, I can still build out a big giant, I mean some small restaurants, I can still build a big terrace just to get those out on the board. And you have to kind of weigh the economic options. You can build a cheap restaurant and start getting those terraces out for a really cheap thing. But if you build one of those big restaurants, and by the way, there is a limit to the different size restaurants. The, the biggest size restaurants, there's only a few of them, and there's a lot more of the smaller ones. But you build one of these bigger size restaurants, yes, it's more expensive to get those terraces out, but you get a lot more victory points. So I like that concept. I like the pigeons. The, you know, you'll build your terrace and you're thinking several things. There's three things really. How cut off my opponents. Get, you know, move it so that they can't build. Copy the shapes that are out there for victory points. And cover up pigeons and be next to things that for the O's end game scoring. So that's a lot going on. And because there's the end game scoring, because there's trying to build those shapes. You're not as cutthroat as you might be. Like I might say, it's best for me to veer off and circle around Suzanne's restaurant here or cut off Mike over here, but I, I want to build this weird looking shape, so I'm going to do that instead. And I think I like that that's there. That keeps you from just taking it and then just making a straight beeline to your left to get people to come. Uh, the, the only negative thing that I would say about this in gameplay wise is I don't like the wild resources. They're too powerful. If you see a wild resource, you always take it. What ingredient? You always take those because they're just that much better. You're looking for very specific things. You know, you're, you're drawing from that deck, trying to find the right card so that you can build specific restaurants out there. And getting a wild just gives you that many more options. I think for me, I might house rule and say, if you take that, that's both your actions for that turn or something along that line because that's that's my only quibble with this. The rest of the game, putting out the stuff, building it, it has a nice satisfying feeling as you see these buildings get placed on the board and the terraces grow out. The theme works well, the little lamps lit around the board, give it that nighttime glow. And so this is not quite what I would call a welcoming game for somebody new to the hobby. I mean, it could be. It's more of what I might consider to be a next step style game, uh, but it's one that I think is pretty cool, and I would like to see more from this company, Funny Fox. Yes, there's a few things like the wild cards and the quality of the cards. I like to see that stuff get improved as they continue out and make new games, but this is a pretty good opening salvo, and I think the theme's gonna attract a lot of people. It's one that you might miss, but I would check it out. Dinner in Paris. I'm Tom Vassell. We'll see you next time.
Dice Tower Judgment approved. <laughs>